Hey everybody, it's Friday. That means it's time for SMG viewers comments. Hope you're gonna have an amazing weekend. Let's get right to it. Hey Glenn, I'm a 14 year old and I wanted to start with making my own music. The problem is I don't make shit for money and all I have is a computer, guitar, bass, and amps. Where do you recommend I start putting my money towards? Also, I've been a fan for a bit more than a year. Keep it up. Well, hey there, piece of cheese. Uh, first off, congratulations on being 14 and having that much equipment to start out with. I don't think I got my first guitar till, you know, I was about 15 and a half, and I didn't even have an amp till about a year later. I remember, you know, plugging a distortion pedal into my home stereo and practicing through that until I finally saved up enough money to get an amp. Uh, fortunately, you know, most people have computers and laptops these days and amp sims are really getting good. So you can do a lot for not a lot of money. But if you're asking where to start, uh, what you wanna do is you wanna get yourself a recording interface to start with. Um, a good one for not a lot of money is the Focusrite 2i2. This is really cool. And um, Audient makes some fantastic ones as well. Especially if you're a guitar player, they've got the new one called the Sono coming out, and that's got a tube front end and it's specifically designed for recording guitar at home. And I'm gonna be demoing that real soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That's gonna be um, a reasonably priced interface that's gonna just have stellar sound quality, which I think is gonna be an amazing uh, solution for a lot of home recording guys. Stay tuned on that one. Hey Glenn, what are your thoughts on bands using Easy Drummer on official releases? That may be my only option at this point as I still can't find a decent drummer. At the moment, it's just me playing guitar and bass. Yes, I do actually practice bass and the vocalist. I can play drums as well, but I can't play at the level stylistically and believe me, I've tried. Would it be worth recording with Easy Drummer for one song or releasing it as a demo drummer wanted advert then re-record it with a real drummer if by some miracle someone comes around? What should I do, man? Cheers from the UK. Hey Tom, that's a fantastic question. Um, I'm sure you're not the only person in that boat, actually. Um, that's the thing, finding a drummer who can pull it off is always going to be a challenge. Um, and then, you know, being able to record real drums and doing it justice is an even bigger challenge. And finding a drummer who works in the studio and whatnot, it's a huge learning curve. I can get it, it can be quite daunting. And so a lot of guys automatically default to Easy Drummer because it sounds good. There's no question about it. Yeah, Easy Drummer does the fucking job. I'm not faulting the program there at all. My problem is everybody uses the same fucking thing. You know, um, take a look at Drumforge or some of the other stuff, BFD or some of the other drum software out there. At least, you know, you can maybe get um, your own sound going on. And yeah, using that to recruit a drummer might be a cool idea. The problem with using Easy Drummer is you're gonna sound, you're gonna wind up sounding generic because just so many bands are using that. Here's a quote from my good friend Ulrich Wilde who recorded Great Southern Trend Kill and Deftones and, and White Zombie and, and Body Count and a whole bunch of really cool shit. Um, this is his quote right around New Year's. I'm listening to one of these new metal playlists. Can someone please use a different snare sample and change the preset on the Fractal for 2019? It's getting increasingly more difficult to tell some of these bands apart. Let's shake it up a bit. Happy New Year. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, let's try something a little different than doing the exact same thing everyone else is doing. There's nothing wrong with trying new ideas and I encourage you guys to do that. Get out there and do something new and push the envelope. Good luck. Hey Glenn, is not using an impulse response on a professional level the same thing as using drum samples? I mean, we are using the mic technique from another engineer. I was debating that with a friend last night and he said it's not the same because the player's playing style influences the tone more than the drums. Sorry for my English, cheers from Puerto Rico. Hey Chris, uh, cheers from Canada. That's freaking awesome. Uh, love hearing from guys all over the world. I don't know uh, if we have many Puerto Rican fans, but um, definitely happy to hear from you. That's a good question and I think your friend does have a point. See. The thing with um, yeah, impulse response is yes, you are using another engineer's mic technique, absolutely. And again, it's all about maybe shortening the process because I know for me, it took years to learn how to mic up a cabinet and get it to sound good. It just simply took forever because I didn't have somebody there to teach me how to do it. I mean, like these days now we've got YouTube and all that stuff and you know, there's videos like how to record heavy guitar, which will help you shorten that whole process. But I mean, like if you're really confused and don't know what to look for in, in a tone, even to start with, yeah, the, the whole process of it can be really daunting. And that was what a lot of the Andy Sneap forum centered around was teaching people how to record metal guitars and get it right. Um, the big difference between using an impulse response and using drum samples is this. You're still getting a human performance when you use an impulse response because there's still a guitar player plugged into an amp and he's playing and you're getting the feel of that guitar player. 
The problem with drum samples is you're replacing your drummer's re performance with somebody else's performance. Sure, he's playing that and, and it's mic'd and whatnot, but that's somebody else hitting the drums. And we've done this before, you know, whereas the guitar sound, a lot of factors go into getting the sound besides just the player. Um, a lot of people say the sounds in the hands, not so much with electric guitar. You can check out the experiment I did with four players and we were shocked by just how similar the tones were. It really comes down to mic placement more than anything. But with a drummer, yes, the drum sound is most definitely in the hands. And you know, this is the thing, if you've got a weak hitter and somebody plays really fast, but hits really, really weak, if you, you crank down down the uh, the differences between um, soft hits and hard hits, the, the different velocities, and you just crank everything to 100, it's gonna sound like your drummer is just, you know, pounding the living shit out of those drums when in, in, in reality, that's just not the case. I love seeing those videos where you gotta go and it just sounds like shotguns. And it's like, yeah, he's not even hitting anywhere near that strength. I, you know, I look at that stuff and I just laugh. It's like, come on, get real. So hopefully that answers your question. Hey Glenn, I've been wondering, what's the difference between mastering and mixing? Thanks, cheers from Houston. Well, mixing is where you take all the various instruments in a song and you blend them together into some kind of cohesive whole. There's a whole art form under that. Mastering is, originally was the guy who took the, the initial mix downs and transferred those onto vinyl. And there was a whole art and science to that. Um, I've got a video where I visited Lacquer Channel Mastering and they actually cut an acetate on there. You can check out the whole process. It's really freaking cool. I'm gonna, if I can remember this, I'll put a link in the description so you guys can check that out. It's really fascinating. Um, but now when we moved from, from vinyl onto CD, the mastering engineer's job from making sure the cutting lathe didn't cut right through the acetate to you know making sure um, you know there's a there's a proper EQ curve on the disc so you're not blasting out the bass and that the overall levels of the song were consistent and then you know during the late 90s and early 2000s it just became make everything loud 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 and even louder and uh, fortunately we're starting to get away with that because YouTube's starting to turn all that shit down and that's a good thing and yes I still have to do a, vi a video on the loudness wars and how we're finally winning that. Hey Glenn, when you use IRs, do you ever find yourself messing around with them later on during the mixing phase? Or do you just choose the one that you like right at tracking and stick with it through the whole process? Cheers from a Brazilian in Switzerland. Okay, that's really freaking cool, actually. To answer your question, I usually go with whatever I track with. I'm going with my own IR set because I know those cabinets and I know how they're gonna sound and I know how they're gonna work. But there's no hard and fast rule there. Yeah, if you can get away with going with the one you tracked with and you like it, great, do that. If you feel you need to tweak it out, do that too. You can have a lot of fun doing blends and that kind of thing. Highly recommend checking out my IR pack. Again, link in the description below uh, from Lancaster Audio. It's all my cabinets here at Spectre Sound and uh, they're definitely designed to get you an awesome metal tone with minimal effort. Do you still do a Rate My Mix episode or is there a way I could have you listen to a mix and give some advice? I am about to send it out to be mastered and self-doubt is kicking in. I've been tracking for over a decade and always sent out my mixes. I've also sat in and produced several records. This is my first EP where I wore all three hats. It's beginning to wear me down. Cheers from the States. Hey, Nick, um, I've kind of slowed that down a little bit. Reason's gonna be coming up in a little bit later in the episode. I'll explain what's going on there. Uh, meanwhile, what I have been doing though, and I just started this last week, was I started doing a Discord uh, with my patrons over on Patreon. And uh, I'm saying this week on Sunday, we're gonna have a session at 2 p.m. Eastern. And that's gonna be, okay, bring me your trouble mixes or you know, bring me a recording of something that's giving you a hard time and let me hear it. And hopefully I can come up with a solution for you. So if you wanna get involved with that, if you wanna get some actual feedback on what you're doing, join my Patreon because that's what it's there for. And I don't have to worry about you know stuff getting demonetized or any of that. I, once again, um, context coming a little bit later in the episode. Bone Bender, Missile Twister, Johnson Juicer, Monkey Spanker, Horse Slogger. Come on, guys, we gotta make a catchy name. It's really fun. Of course, you're referencing Monday's episode for the uh, the Pussy Melter pedal. Um, personally, I like the idea of a dolphin flogger. That's my thing, but whatever. Anyway, you guys got great ideas for pedal names. Uh, list them below. Maybe we can make something happen. I have been talking with the company that did develop the Pussy Melter, and we might actually be doing the Cock Blocker gate pedal. So if you guys want to get one, let me know and uh, we might do a limited run where you can actually order one online through my web store. Should be pretty freaking cool. 
Emma make an SJW pedal. Clean a safe space. Mid pickup is triggered. Distortion is read. Bravo, sir. A crush mic? Am I hearing that correctly? Hey, Matt, thanks for writing. Yes, crush mic, you are hearing that correctly. We're not crushing an actual microphone, we're crushing the signal. Um, a crush mic is a term we use when we're miking a kit in a large room. What we'll do is we'll put a mic maybe up against the wall, we'll catch some of the reflections off that, and we'll stomp the living shit out of that signal with a compressor and just get this big, booming, explosive tone. Crush mics are a lot of fun. They usually involve probably the most expensive mic you have into the most expensive compressor you have on the most sig expensive signal chain you have. Um, and yeah, they can be a lot of fun. We did some stuff in phase one with Vias and the crush mic was like an old vintage Telefunken 47 into like, you know, a $10,000 compression. Wow, did it ever sound freaking cool. So you could try that at home with some of your, uh, with some multi-tracks and whatnot, but um, don't worry if you don't have, you know, the $10,000 compressor or whatnot. Uh, the Slate Distressor plugin is actually pretty freaking awesome. Hi Glenn, you mentioned in some of your past videos that you don't like CD Baby. So what's the story behind that? Please have a pleasant evening fucking yourself. This goes back to my mix reviews live thing and I tell you guys, please don't submit anything that's been put through CD Baby because CD Baby makes an automatic claim on those mixes and takes all the monetization from my video. I've literally had songs that I've recorded in here, mixed, mastered, the whole fucking process, shot a video for with the band and if I run it in background music, uh, in one of these videos, like viewers' comments or something like that, CD Baby will take all the earnings for themselves. Um, they don't have an easy system to get around that. They say there's a whitelisting system, but I've talked to some of the bands they are like, uh, we don't know how to find it. It's really fucking difficult. So, yeah, CD Baby, um, I approached them a couple years about that, uh, ago about that. I didn't get, really get too much of a reply till I did an episode. Then all of a sudden, oh, well, we uh, we authorized those videos. It's fine now. And I'm like, well, you never gave me my money, though. You guys kept that. So CD Baby is in the shithouse as far as I'm concerned. Um, there's, there's even been cases where bands have written me and they said CD Baby has taken monetization from videos from their own fucking songs. I mean, do you really want to deal with that kind of fucking nightmare? I mean, like, if CD Baby cleaned things up, if they made things easier to deal with, then, you know, great, go for it. But as far as I know, things haven't changed very much. I mean, like, I've got this piece right here. Video, live reviews of your mixes, Spectre Sound Studios, copyrighted content, the new regime claimed by CD Baby. Guess who's taking the earnings from that video? You guessed it, CD Baby. Thanks a lot, CD Baby, I really appreciate it. It's not like the band gave me permission to use the songs in my fucking video or something. You should put strippers in the background videos. Well, that'd be a lot of fun, especially if I got to shoot it. But unfortunately, uh, that costs money and I'd probably get demonetized and probably age restricted as well. So how about no? The opening drum beat on Iron Man is off beat slightly. Would drum alignment make it better? Fuck no! That's the thing. It's like if, if somebody did Iron Man these days, yeah, the, the first thing the engineer would do is just sit there and timeline everything. And it's like, what fun is that? You know, if it doesn't sound like it's just about ready to fall apart, you're doing something wrong. If you listen to I Want to Be Your Dog by the Stooges, you'll hear that they made a few mistakes on the recording, but they still have more attitude than any time aligned in sampled metal bands. And I would totally agree with that. You know, you put on a lot of the old Stooges stuff, it's kind of all over the place, but that's kind of what gave it its charm. I mean, like, if you go listen to the Kingsman, Louie Louie, that was a huge hit. That was, you know, basically, you know, really lo-fi recording. The band did it as a demo to work on a cruise ship. You can actually hear the drummer yell fuck when he drops his drumstick after the solo. And the singer comes in at the wrong time after the solo. There's all kinds of mistakes on that, but it was still a massive hit. And you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. The humanity stuff is way more interesting than stuff that's been cleaned up and fixed. Linux guy here. I use Ardur and Guitar X for recording, been using it for five plus years. Pretty steep learning curve and I'm still learning, but getting there. Dude, holy crap. Talk about recording in difficult mode. I've been asked to join bands until they find out I don't have transportation. They probably say, never mind, too many bands out there of good players, they can't drive. But they'll take a juggie who will steal everyone's gear. I understand where you're coming from, but a band does need to get gear to the gig, so maybe they figure there'll be less hassle dealing with the junkie than trying to find you a lift. I don't know, have you ever considered maybe getting your license? 
Glenn, you know how much you love locking tuners. Well, you need to try out possibly do a fearless gear review on Graph Tech Ratio locking tuners. These babies are like locking tuners on steroids. I promise you would put these on every guitar in the studio. Oh, by the way, fuck you, Glenn. Best wishes from Frederictown, MO, USA. Hey, Chris. Actually, I did a video uh, featuring the Graph Tech Ratio locking tuners, which are right here. Um, a couple years ago where we upgraded this inexpensive Legator with some Fishman Fluence pickups. And yeah, the Graph Tech ratios. And you know what? They are fantastic. I absolutely love tuning uh, with these things. And yes, I do want to put them on more guitars. They, you are absolutely correct. Uh, the video is called Make a Cheap 7-String Guitar Awesome. Uh, I'll try and put a link in that there for you. And I highly recommend checking it out because, yeah, we take a $300 Legator and we make it play like a $1,000 guitar. We not only put in the tuners, we also put in a new nut. And, yeah, the Fishman Fluence pickups, yeah, this guitar just plays awesome and, more importantly, sounds awesome. We want both. The home equipment because that is what most of us are using and high-end stuff because, well, it's cool. Personally, I like to see more practical videos on home equipment and more technical in-depth ones of high-end equipment. Maybe you can get the engineer who builds these high-end things and have them talk about what's going on at Visit a Factory that makes high-end amps, microphones, or whatnot, and have them walk you through the process. Okay, that's actually a great suggestion. Uh, please check out my visit to Ward Beck Systems where we talk about the dual M460A uh, preamps they reissued, they, that they restored and all that. It's a really cool piece. And uh, again, I will try and remember to put a link to that video. It's super cool. I definitely want to do some more walkthrough. It's where we go to manufacturers and whatnot. I know I'm going to do some stuff like that in LA. Um, yeah, if you guys want to see more high-end stuff, I will try and put it. But yeah, you, I think you got a point there. I think we need a good balance for the affordable shit and the stuff we all dream about. Unrelated to the video, but I really, really hope you see this comment, Glenn. I would really like you to do a video on mixing the entire drum bus. Or at least a video where I can hear what your drums sound like raw, because maybe just panning in levels. Because you always get a great sound. I've never heard your drums raw, and I think that's really important. It's one of the first things I look for on YouTube as a drummer. Thanks, and fuck you, Glenn. Well, hey, Nick, you can check out my premium lesson, Producing Prog Metal, where I take you through the whole mix process. You can grab it at Pro Mix Academy. Again, link in the description below. Mayday, Mayday, Emergency SOS! Glenn, I've been playing guitar for about 20 years and been married for 13 years. Been in several bands before and during the marriage. Within the past year and a half, I started getting in the recording side of things, and we all know how much time and dedication it takes. But last night, my wife told me that she wishes I would never start it. This whole music thing, and that it's so annoying. In your next video, can you do me a huge favor and tell her to fuck off? And I'll make sure to watch the video while you're sitting next to each other. I'm Junior, and she's Amanda. Keep succeeding. Well, I think you might be taking the wrong approach there. I mean, like, if she's telling you to not do what you love to do, okay. That's kind of a shitty thing. I mean, like the thing about having a partner is they're supposed to support you in your interests. I think she's maybe feeling a little left out, possibly a little ignored. Um, in my case, what I did was I got, 20 years ago, I got my wife a subscription to EverQuest. And then, because she was, she's a gamer chick. And then, you know, it was Asheron's Call and, you know, just Anarchy Online and pretty, you know, Age of Conan just, Star Wars Galaxies, all these, you know, massively online multiplayer games uh, she really got into that were huge time sinks. And then, you know, when they're when the wife is occupied, they're not bored, they're not mad at you. Um, I think, Amanda, you do need to realize that your husband is not your home entertainment system and you should be able to entertain yourself. If he's going to do something, maybe you should back him up because it could be potentially lucrative. That and, you know, get a freaking hobby. But yeah, I'm not gonna tell her to fuck off. Just maybe you guys should talk about it and you know, maybe you can find something for her to do. All right, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm gonna be doing a Discord this Sunday for my patrons. So if you wanna get involved and hang out and maybe get some feedback on what you're doing, um, you can follow the link in the description below, patreon.com slash SMG. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have an incredible weekend and I will see you on Monday. Take care. Hey guys, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe as I post every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. If you want to learn more about recording, check out one of my tutorials or one of my gear reviews if you want the actual honest truth about a piece of equipment.